The Great Barrier Reef is facing death by a thousand cuts from mining and overdevelopment. At least that's one of the messages being sent loud and clear to a United Nations inspection team here to assess whether the reef should be classified as a World Heritage Site in danger. Spurred to action by the UN inquiry, Federal Environment Minister Tony Burke has told 7.30 he will closely scrutinise any further port developments in North Queensland to ensure the reef is protected. Peter McCutcheon reports. The Great Barrier Reef is as vast and beautiful as it is fragile. The dangers to this environmental icon are seemingly endless. Runoff, tree clearing, overfishing, cyclones, global warming, ocean acidification. These things come together to increase the pressure and, and the reef is at a crossroads because of that. And add to this list something that is not exactly new but rapidly expanding, bulk commodity shipping. There's been a number of groundings over the years. In my opinion, we've been lucky, <coughs> uh, very lucky to escape a major spill. It's this growing industrialisation of the central and north Queensland coastline that has sparked a diplomatic spat with UNESCO. The international body is so concerned that it has sent a team to investigate with its so-called monitoring mission arriving in Sydney today. The level of interest in, in this mission has been unprecedented in, uh, unprecedented in terms of the amount of uh, input we've had from, from stakeholders. We're um, talking about a place that is iconic, just not just for Australians, but for humanity. This is where the trouble started. The building of a port facility on Curtis Island in Gladstone Harbour, the most industrialised part of the Great Barrier Reef coastline. And it's perhaps because of that that the Australian government didn't tell the international body that gives the Barrier Reef its World Heritage status. But the World Heritage Committee were right to point out uh, that it was something that Australia hadn't been doing. We had a different system that had been in place for decades. The moment that they raised it, we fixed it. The World Heritage Committee meeting in Paris nine months ago used strong language to criticise the breach of protocol, noting it was extremely concerned about the port development. The dispute was contained when the Australian government agreed to host a nine-day visit to the reef by the World Heritage team. I think it's significant. I think it's significant in terms of, you know, outside scrutiny. John Tanzer is a former head of the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority. This visit by the monitoring committee, is, is it more than just looking at one development in Gladstone Harbour? Yes, I think it's about the, the World Heritage property, the Great Barrier Reef, you know, World Heritage area more generally and the cumulative effect of these increased pressures and what, what pressure they're putting on the ecosystem as a whole. And one of those pressure points is the expansion of coal ports. There are presently three major coal port terminals along the Great Barrier Reef coastline, the biggest of which are at Dalrymple Bay near Mackay and Gladstone. Over the next decade, these coal ports will expand and multiply. It's difficult to work out exactly how much coal transport traffic will increase, but the Australian government makes an estimate in its recent submission to the UNESCO Monitoring Committee. The latest figures show exports from Great Barrier Reef ports at just over 150 million tonnes, with the current capacity for another 100 million. But by the end of the decade, the Australian government estimates the annual tonnage capacity of these ports could be close to a billion. We're talking about perhaps a five-fold increase in shipping over the next decade. Do you agree that will increase the risk to the Great Barrier Reef? Oh, well, I certainly haven't seen a number that large. Uh, the industry uh, has some strong growth prospects and I wouldn't be surprised to see the coal industry uh, double uh, in production uh, in Queensland over the end of this decade. So that will require more ships. And the shipping of coal was responsible for this grounding in 2010. A Chinese bulk carrier destroyed three kilometres of reef. The white powder is finely ground coral. But the Queensland Resources Council says this sort of accident is rare. And the increase in shipping over the past few years has not led to any corresponding increases in accidents. You can never be sure about human error, and of course we had one recent incident uh, involving human error, but by and large uh, the uh, Great Barrier Reef is uh, really incident free when it comes to the shipping movements from these uh, large uh, sort of coal ships.
Despite the increase in shipping over the past few years, there hasn't been a corresponding increase in the number of major incidents. D doesn't that mean that we're handling this boom fairly well? Um, I, look, my view is that there's an element of luck that we've, uh, we've been banking on all this and we can't continue to operate on that basis. The Federal Environment Minister, Tony Burke, agrees shipping needs to be closely scrutinised. I've been making the argument for some time that shipping activity is potentially the most environmentally sensitive activity in the entire mix here. Tony Burke argues stricter shipping regulations have been in place for the past 12 months. Any application that's going to have a continued marked increase if it was successful on shipping movements needs to be scrutinised incredibly closely and I view that as a critical part of any environmental approval. This UNESCO visit has already had some effect, prompting the Australian and Queensland governments last year to begin a strategic review on how future development will affect the Great Barrier Reef. To what extent is this too late? Hasn't the horse already bolted? Oh no, I, well I, I think at any point in time people would, whenever you start a strategic assessment, people will look at applications that already kicked off and said, oh wouldn't it have been good if we'd done it before those applications arrived. You, you'll always be in that situation. The Great Barrier Reef is definitely at a crossroad and decisions that will be taken over the next uh, one, two, three years might potentially really be um, crucial for the long-term conservation. After their visit to the reef, the UNESCO team will be compiling a report that in a worst case scenario could declare Australia's environmental treasure as being in danger. I think we just need to put a hold on these major developments or make sure that we do the strategic assessment first before we go making decisions about creating new greenfield sites, new ports. Peter McCutcheon with that report.